Let's read first book of Acts chapter one. Check verse 10. You follow then from verse nine, he say, and when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up and cloud received him out of their sight, their sight. Uh, I'll start from verse eight, but he shall receive power after that. The Holy Ghost is come upon you and he shall be witness unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, and unto the utmost part of the earth. So here you can see a promise the Father gave to us through Jesus of the Holy Ghost. When the Holy Ghost come upon men, this is what men are expected, to preach the gospel, to be witness. What is the gospel? To witness who is Christ, how he came, how he lived on earth, how he died, how he rose again on the third day, and how he went to heaven, and how we are expecting him to come. That's what we are expected, every believer, to tell somebody, to witness, telling people of what Christ is. So if you are a Christian and you don't take a step and tell people, it is not the right way. Jesus has given us his Holy Spirit to give us that courage to go out and tell people, to witness, telling people of what Christ can do, what Christ means, how they need Christ in their life, what Christ has done into our life, how Christ has transformed us as individuals. You tell people your testimony, which means your past life before Christ and after you accepted him. It's very, very important. Praise God. So I'll say this to us that the free gift of the Holy Spirit has been given to us all. What a blessing. I know many are saying I don't have Holy Spirit, but as we continue, you'll find out if you are not okay uh, yet baptized. By when we read chapter two, I believe and declare everyone else will witness what we call personal visitation of the Holy Spirit. Praise God. So he went further and said, and when he had spoken these things while they beheld, he was taken up and cloud received him out of their sight. So after Christ had given that information to disciples, all as they were looking at him, he was received in heaven, which means they were able to see him going up and the cloud received him, which means he disappeared from their sight, cloud cover him up. What a good thing. We are believing in a God or a savior that yes, he died on the third day he rose. I went to heaven. So we are believing in a living God, a living king, a living savior, not like others. The one they trust in or believe in is in the grave, even they have grave, where they know they buried their so-called people they are put trust in. But we, we believe in the living son of the living God. He came on earth, he lived with us, he ate like us, he behaved like us, he was like us 100%. After his mission, when he died, he was crucified yet without sin. They claimed, to, they tried, they did all to kill him. So he went to the grave and he preached the gospel to the dead. The Bible make it clear that there were some individuals who were witnessing those days that rose in his time. On the third day, he rose again because death could not hold him down. On the third day after he rose, he lived with his disciple for 40 good days, as you have read here. And he showed by many, many proofs. He visited them. He appeared to them. He was with them, he ate with them, he broke bread with them to prove that he's alive. Then after that, that's where we are reading that he was caught into heaven. Praise God. So listen, as they were busy looking where we have entered the sky or heaven, verse 10, and while they were looking steadfast towards the heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apple. So as they were looking, trying to see what is have happened, then two men appear dressed in white to them. Eleven, which also said, ye men of Galilee, 
Why stand here gazing up with he into heaven? This same Jesus which you take up, taken up from you in heaven, shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. There is something I want you to see. This angel, all two men that appeared, they could tell where these people come from. It could tell that these are Galileans. Galilean. What does that mean? It means that God knows you. God knows you and you by name. You know where you come from. You know your origin. You know you very well. So here, this man came to them and called them, described them by their name, their place. You Galilean. This same Jesus that have been taken away is as he have went. That is the same way we come. So it's a promise to us that as Christ went to heaven, that is the same way we'll come. So let there be no man deceive you and tell you that Jesus have come to Uganda, Jesus is coming to India, Jesus is coming to America. Jesus, don't listen to those lies. Don't listen to somebody telling you that Jesus tell him he should come in, he's coming to his church. It is a lie. The Bible makes us clear, according to what we are reading, that the way the disciples saw him going, so that's how the entire world, all of us in the same day, in the same hour, whether you are in America, whether you are in Europe, whether you are in Africa, whether you are in Asia, whether you are wherever you may be, all of us will see him coming, heaven will open, and we see him coming with, the hope, with his glory. What a beautiful day it will be. It will be a great day. For us who are waiting him will rejoice. But for those who denied him, it will be a terrible day. So we are looking forward on this day for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He will reward everyone according to his deeds. Praise be to God. What a great day it will be. So let there be nobody lie to you this matter. I have heard many years ago, I remember those times you know, when I was in Africa. I used to hear they tell, I heard they told people to sell all their belongings that Jesus is coming, even uh, a world is coming to an end. So they were selling their belongings and they're bringing their money, their, the money they have sold to the church. You can see how people are somehow fools. If this very pastor telling you to sell your belongings and is asking you to bring the money to him, and afterwards, what happened? They collected many of them in the garden in a church. They put fire on them. They make the end of them. And this man went away with their money. So anyone who tried to tell you any statement that is not in the Bible, run, run for your life. Praise be to God. I rejoice because I know I've said this, so you will not be a victim. Praise be to God. Twelve. Then, then return they unto Jerusalem from Mount called Olive, which is from Jerusalem, the Sabbath day journey. Okay. So afterwards, they had to return to a particular mountain. They returned and gathered there. There is something I want you to give me your heart. Please, you hear this very well. Praise God. Verse 13 of First Peter, first and Acts, or verse 13 of Acts chapter 1, he said, Let me read first 12. They returned unto Jerusalem to the mount called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, the Sabbath. So they returned to a mountain, it's called Mount called Olivet. That's where they returned. To me, I understand Mount is like, even though. Okay, nowadays we understand if somebody say I'm in the mountain, it's fasting. So I do believe that they are returned to that mountain. It symbolizes that they steadfastly give themselves to God to want to know what is next, waiting for that promise that was promised to them. So it means as a Christian, you may not be fasting all the time, but you can fast bad behavior. It doesn't mean that you only be a good woman or a good man when you are fasting. I have realized when people fast, they are very humble, they are so kind, but after fasting, they go back to their bad behavior. It's not supposed to be so. As a Christian, when you take a, a Christian, you need to fast every day in a sense, not fasting for food, bad behavior. You watch, 
your tongue. You watch your behavior. You watch why you have already living. You are already living for Christ. So if you hear this, they went to Mount Olivet. It means they separated themselves. If we really want to experience God or to encounter the presence of God, you must separate yourself. Not everybody will go to the mountain, but the reason why people go to mountain to separate themselves so that they can be able to hear God's opinion concerning themselves or their others. Praise God. So he said that the journey took them just, uh, here my Bible says, uh, let me, I will say maybe seven days. But listen to this 13. And when they were come in that, they went up into an upper room where aboard both Peter and James, John and Andrew, they, James, B. Simon of Elphas, Simeon, Zoltas, and Judas, the brother of James. So they went in the upper room. Still, it shows that they separated themselves. Upper room, I know it is like, I don't know. I would say like the way we are living in upstairs. We are living in the upper room. Maybe there are some. So they separated them in a particular place. I will repeat again. When you want to experience God, you must separate yourself. You must deny yourself some things. You must excuse yourself so that you can hear the voice of God. Praise God. I know at you, as human, we tend to miss sometimes due to pressure and circumstances that surround us. But I will say this. It is very important when you create some time, just you want to hear God. I love to say this. I reach a time sometimes I don't just pray. After I sing praises and worship, I sit down and I want to hear God's opinion concerning you and my staff. Praise God. And I thank God I've been gracious wherever I keep quiet. He revealed himself. Praise God. And it's really awesome. I have learned to sit down and listen because I know God wants to talk to me. So I sit down and I want him to tell me what to pray for. Praise God. So I thank God and I'm really happy. That's why I see I'm really happy to mention this to my sister Tina. When I saw, because I was really asking God about you as an individual. God showed me and I tell you, Tina, as you hear to me, if really I be a man of God, you will tell me this will happen. I saw you in a Zoom. Like you mistakenly forget, you are forgotten to off your video. And you are not working in your house, but you are working in a particular office. I don't know. A very, and you are talking, you know, how you know a woman who is happy. I could really see the way you are talking and walking around, making order. I, I can't wait this to happen. Because I saw you walking around. And I tell you this, one good thing, when God shows me something, it is not about a man. It means he has done it. So I can't wait to see you. I don't know what you are, I don't know what you have been doing as source of income, but what you have been doing is going to come out of what you have been thinking. Um, I rejoice with you. I saw you very well. You are looking so beautiful and moving. I will only say what I will live to see happen. When I was quiet praying, concerning you. That is what the Lord showed me. And I said, thank you, Jesus. So he can never lie. Praise God. Amen, so, Baba. God bless you. I rejoice with you. Amen. I say this. I have learned to sit down and listen. When I come in the midst, I will love to pray. But when I'm myself, if I'm with somebody, I will pray. But when I'm in myself, I love to praise God and sit down and tell him, what do you want me to pray for? Then he directs me. I'm so happy because of what I've re God has revealed. I don't need to say it is better people to see it happen. Praise God. But you will see many things from this very day. You know, as a person, we tend to go astray in one way. But according to what the Lord has made me understand, you know, I want you to learn this. 
sit down and ask God, where do I need to do? Where, do I, where is my problem? What do I need to correct? Then the Lord will tell you, you missed a mark. When he directs you now what you're supposed to do, you are so happy. Praise God. So we continue. The Bible says that he mentioned all the apostles as they gather. And the Bible make it clear that they were in one accord. The Bible says this all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication. The women, Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with brethren. So there is something I want you to see. If, to know, if we are to witness God, to experience his power, we need to have what we call being in one accord. And we have to be consistently in prayer. You pray wherever we call out for prayer as a group, let us come up and pray. Even though God have not yet answered what you have been asking him, don't say he did not answer me. Come up and let us pray. I have, with, I have realized this. The Lord have made me promise that the reason this gathering is called God will provide it means it will provide the answer to every question. It will provide way where there is no way. When the Lord gave me the name, he made me understand. It was about Abraham and his son Isaac. Isaac asked his, asked his father, I see firewood, but where is the sacrifice? Then Abraham asked, told Isaac, God will provide. And indeed, when Abraham was intending to sacrifice his son, if you look Genesis 22, verse 8, you will realize the voice from heaven said to Abraham, now I believe that you fear God and trust him. And he told you not do anything to your son. There is a sacrifice. When he turned around, he saw a lamb. What does that mean? You, God who provides is a gathering where heaven have opened and the voice of God speaking to provide every answer where there is no answer, to provide a sacrifice, to provide that very thing. So I want you to be rest assured that your problem will not escape the grace and anointing of God. Praise God. So please listen. All I request is that let us be in one accord. Yes, you may disagree. Yes, we may not cope up, but let us try to maintain the unity as brothers and sisters. So here is the matter. The Bible went further and said, that this all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication, the women. And so it means let us, no matter what, continue in prayer and supplication, offering our supplication to God, telling him what we desire, telling him what, reminding him of his promises. How can you find the promise of God? If he have not revealed to you through dream or through a prophecy, all this Bible you see, it is full of God promises. Remind him, whether you are sick, you say, Father, you promise to heal me. When Christ went and came, he was wounded for my infirmity. So heal me, Lord. When you continue reminding him, maybe you are going through severe poverty. Then you remind you say, Lord, you say, I am head, but see my circumstances. The more you remind him, one day it will make you become a head. Praise God. So listen. Here he mentioned women. It means women are not excluded in the ministry. Yes, in some people have a question saying that women know, but here it shows that when they gather in prayer and supplication, Mary, mother of Jesus, was there with the other women. What does that mean? No one is excluded in their witness, witnessing about Christ. Whoever is available, God will use them in a mighty way. Praise God. So, as we continue, the Bible says 15, and in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said, the number 
names together were about 120. So there were very many in one place, 120 disciples, followers of Christ, waiting on the promise. So Peter stood on, in their midst, just like the way I'm in your midst, reminding you of what God has said. They may not be new things to you, but maybe you have heard, but somehow you have forgotten the name. So I'm in your midst to remind you what the scriptures say, what God say concerning your situation. Praise God. So the Bible says there were 120, one accord. Imagine, how beautiful, imagine. 120, they are in one accord. They are praying together, offering their supplication to God. It's something amazing. Praise God. Satan knows how powerful brethren to do it together. That's why you see, wherever people are too, Satan will always raise an issue for them to have misunderstanding. If it's a family, they will disagree. That's why you see, it may be a family where people may not pray together, people may not even eat together, people may not even talk to one another in a family. Why? Satan knows the power behind the unity. When you are united, United we stand and divided we fall. Praise God. So I pray that the spirit of unity dwell in us forever in Jesus' name. Let there be nothing bring disunity in our midst. So listen, beloved. Men and brethren, this scripture must need to have been fulfilled with the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spoke before concerning Jesus, Judas, which was guide to them. So you can see here that Peter reminded them that it was what they were experiencing or what Christ going to be destroyed, being killed, rose again, and Judah betraying him. It was something fulfillment of the scripture that was said earlier on. So it was something to fulfill what God have already said. So in other words, it means whatever God has said to you concerning your situation, it is just a matter of time for it to come into manifestation. It may be today, of which I believe let it be today. Praise God. If it have not yet happened, wait, because every word that comes out of the mouth of God can never come back to him in voice. It has the power of fulfillment. Praise God. So. It was already written that Judah, what he acted, it was something was written earlier on. So Judah was fulfilling a scripture. Praise be to God. You can see, the Bible went far and said that it was something by the inspiration of the Spirit of God. He inspired David to see, because he was in the Holy Ghost, he was saying something that was going to come to pass for many years. So it was fulfilled. You see how Holy Spirit is so beautiful. He tells somebody, because if you see the time Christ, from the time of Christ and David, you can see it's almost um, 14 generations. So a lot of time, years. So for he was numbered with us and had obtained a part of ministry. So he said Judah was part of them among the 12 whom Christ selected and appointed as apostle. But in other words, he could not fulfill, he fulfilled what he wanted as a betrayer. That's why he was called. What does that mean? All people may be Christians, all may be men and women of God, but there are some, some who play the role of Judah. Praise God. So if you find somebody betrays you, just know he's playing the part of Judah in your life. That's why you see many times we pray and say, we cancel the spirit of betrayal. Because a spirit of betrayal can enter anyone and anyone can betray anybody. But I reject that in our midst in Jesus' name. So, he mentioned that for he was numbered with us and had obtained part of of his ministry, which was his ministry was betrayed Jesus. That's why you see, we have false teachers and Jesus teacher. False teachers are the one teach people with their own personal intention, interest. 
but Christ teachers are the ones who teach people to help them to make heaven. Praise God. Now, this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, falling allowed, he burst asunder in the midst and all his balls are gnashed out. So you can see how terrible sin is. I want us to understand something. When Jordan was led by evil spirit to be an instrument that was used to betray our Lord Jesus Christ, there is something happening. I do believe Judah tried to repent. I do believe. Why? The Bible tells us that Judah, after he had realized he had done wrong thing, carried the money and take it back to treasure. That was a sign of repentance. He regretted his mistake after the enemy have used him to do wrong. And this is what happened many a times. Sometimes, many a times men, under the influence of evil spell, they are controlled to do something that is wrong. Afterwards, they regret when the spirit have left them. That is the work of Satan. He may push something, somebody to do wrong, and he put, he ran away from the person. That's why you see, always we forgive people. When we look beyond what we see, in the eyes of love, knowing that it's not them, but it's the enemy. Praise God. So the Bible say here, the money he purchased Christ, the money received us between Christ, he went and bought a land. And this is what happened. He did not use that land for anything. The Bible says that he was found vast, even this intestine was seen. Praise God. So what does that show? That wherever man, Find joy in causing pain in others. This is what happened. He will not go unpunished. That's why you see somebody can depart with something blessing, but no one can, you cannot escape with sin. The consequences or the reward or the wages of sin are death. Praise God. Okay, I continue in this area, then we'll hear somebody. Please listen. He went and it was known unto all the dwellers of Jerusalem in so much as the field is called in their proper town as El Dema. That is to say the field of the blood. So what happened to Judah? It was well known entire Jerusalem until even now as we are reading about it. That he was found his bus and they ended up the place or the land that he had where he died, that name Balkama. What does that mean? That whether you do good or wrong, it will spread abroad. So it is better you do good and let the news about your good work goes abroad than the news of your wickedness. Praise God. So entire Jerusalem knew what happened to Judah. Praise God. So listen. Cover yourself with the blood of Jesus. Cover your place, yourself, blood of Jesus upon the entire forum. Blood of Jesus. Any strange spirit, blood of Jesus. I cancel every negative spirit to interfere with the forum. Cancel them, cancel them. Cancel every interference. Cancel every wicked spirit. Cancel every interference. Is it internet, whatever it is, we cancel it in Jesus' name. Amen. So, the Bible went further and said, and it is written in the book of Psalms, let his habitation be desolate, and let no man dwell there, and his bishop there, let another take. So I will say this, this is the reward of the wicked. You may admire them because they are prospering, but the truth is that their place someone else will take and what belongs to them, it will end up being desolate. No one. That's why you see, when a wicked man perish, even his wealth perish and his children are no more. That is what will happen to them. You will see a very man doing well wickedness. But as soon as he dies, his money starts vanishing and his children are no more. That is what they say. He said, that was... So David was moved in the Holy Spirit and said that let no, someone else take his place and let his place become desolate, which means that land 
No one can live there. It is desolate. And each place as an apostle, someone else take. What does that mean? Whatever God gives you a place or a position to lead his people in any area, make all effort to see that you serve God with all heart and diligence, appreciating that it's just a privilege. Meaning that anybody can come and take your position. But my prayer is that nobody will come and take your position. Oh, my position. Praise God. We serve God and finish, accomplish our mission on earth. So listen. Wherefore, there are men who have come, praying with us all the time, that the Lord Jesus went and out among us. Okay. So it's bishops, okay. Be Beginning from the baptism of John unto the, that same day, it was taken up, okay, let me say this. Now they, they came up with a thought of which I want us to learn something, that they wanted to replace someone because they were 11 now, after Judah have left. They wanted to get one person to replace Judah, of which I want us to learn something from it. Listen to what they did. The Bible says, and they appointed to Joseph called Barabbas, who was a known Justus and Matthias. First of all, these are the things they consider before they select. They say, whereas of them, these men, which have combined with us all the time, that the Lord Jesus went in and out. So they wanted, to, these are the qualities. They wanted to take someone among them, someone who was with them from the beginning, going out and in, and the time even Christ was still with them. Listen, what they went and said, beginning from the baptism of John and unto that the same day that he was taken up from us, meaning someone who was with them from the beginning of the baptism until the day Jesus was taken in front of them, let that qualify one to be, to be included among them. In other words, it means, your consistency in the presence of God matters men a lot. It gives you a room or access to when you raise your voice before God, it can be easily attended. Why? You are always present. Where there is Bible study, you are there. Where are you there serving, you are there. Where there is a gathering, you are there. It means you are always there, just like this man. When they wanted to choose one to replace Judah, they say they should look at the person who was with them right from the time of John the Baptist and until Christ was taken. So meaning, even if I am to select somebody, if God used me to select somebody among us, it will be someone who is consistently present. Praise God. Present most of the time. That person is qualified to serve in the ministry of God. Praise God. So listen what happened. So, and they appointed to Joseph called Barabbas and who was a known Justus and Matthew. So they appointed to. But this is what I want you to understand. That God bring a thought to people and he wait to see how they will apply it. This thought of them replacing it was from God. So he allowed them to see if they really need him to select for them. So it's the same thing. Whenever you are doing something, you can have a thought. It comes from God. But before you make a final decision, come and hear God's opinion. Because God knows the heart of man. Sometimes people may be committed, may be so nice, so kind. But in a real sense, they are not what you think they are. Who know if they are present with their selfish interests? Who know if they are present because they love God? So be watchful when you, when you make decisions. Listen. So after they chose Justus and Matthias, this is what happened. They prayed and said, do Lord, which knows the hearts of all men. Show whether of these two who has chosen. 
This is what we ought to do as the children of the Most High God. Wherever we want to make a final decision, yes, we can select people. Yes, you can, before you enter agreement, final agreement, try to see you want to hear God's opinion. Why? You want God to tell you what is in the heart of the person. Praise God. That's why you see, personally, by the help of the Spirit of God, help me to know what is in the heart of people. And that works me to be more stick to them because I know their heart is good. Their intention is good. So you are such a good person with a good heart. I will tell you something. Last time I said this, God can only show you your enemy if he knows you will, he will pray for your enemy. But if you will want to fight your enemy physical, God will never show you. And this is what I've helped me. I, God showed me everything. Why? When I realized somebody really hates me dearly, I become a prayer partner of the person, praying for that person to be delivered. But you, you will start fighting that person. Praise God. And it has helped me because Satan don't use people images in my dream because he, when he uses, I know if somebody's doing bad, I'll pray for the person. So I know he will make a mistake. Okay. Listen. So they prayed and asked God to choose because he knows the heart of men. Hearts of men are deceptive, but God knows the heart of men. That's why, see, we can choose, but God chooses as he pleases. We can ordain men, but God ordains as he pleases. You get what I mean? Here, you see, they ordain two. They call two. God chooses one among the two. So listen, they say, whether of these two do has chosen, that he may take part of his, this ministry and apostolship from which Judah, by transgression, felt that he may go to his own place. So they prayed and they cast lots. So please, I pray to God that he may help you, that after prayer, you take a step to ask more, to find out what exactly God's opinion concerning your exact matter. Praise God, beloved. So listen. When they cast the Lord, God chose one of them. And they gave forth their lords, and the Lord fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the 11 apostles. So the Lord fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered among the, the 12. So he became the, tw the 12th person. So it is my prayer, based on this, that before you do a final decision, take time and ask God, is it a business partner? You can start cooperating with the person. But before you sign any document, try to ask someone to hear, to hear from God opinion concerning that business partner. Is it a, a deal, partnership? Try to ask God. If it is a marriage, take a step and ask God. Why? God knows human's heart and he will help you to make the right decision. Praise be to God. Don't just rush. Don't let just circumstance. Praise God, because Satan is very wicked. If you know God has promised you a white cup, it will bring you something that looks like a white cup. But inside, it is not really the same cup, but they look the same. So you can only identify that if you pray and ask God, is this really cup the really one you want me to have? Then God will tell you the cup you are holding is the real one, but the other one you are seeing, it is not the true thing. Praise God. I have made such mistakes, but I will never want you to do such mistakes. Because when you make a mistake, it costs you. 
Praise God. So I pray to you that listen to me, please. Wherever you make any final decision, take time and ask God. Listen from people. I know some of you, you have spiritual father and spiritual mother. It is a good thing. Ask them. But still come to the final conclusion. Let God give you answer. Why? There was a time we know about Hosea. There's something happened between the queen the king of Israel. The prophecy came, they asked, Joseph had asked, is there a king, a, a, a prophet of God? You say, yeah. Then they say, let us ask him first. So they brought all the prophets in that land at that time. And it was found out that all prophets were saying to the king of Israel, go and will prosper. But only one prophet came out with what Jeremiah said. If you go, you will not prosper. And one prophet slipped him. He says, since when did God speak through you and did not speak to me through you? And in a really sense, Jeremiah went further and said, I saw God on his throne. And he was with his host angels and asked, who will go and entangle this Israeli king? Then one angel said, I will go. And they asked him, how will you go? He said, I will become a, a deceiving spirit on his prophet. And God said to him, you will prosper. And indeed, when he came, all the prophets were prophesying was lied to the king. Only one prophet came and declared the truth. What does that mean? Even if a prophet tell you something, no matter how it may be, come back to God and hear to him from him. Praise God. There is also an incident happened. There is a prophet of God. God told him, go to a particular land. And he went. And he told him, when you go, don't eat, don't come back. To the, don't go to the, eat. So another prophet came to him and lied to him and told him, God have said he should come back. And the truth, God did not tell that prophet. When he followed, because the other one was older prophet, listen what happened to him. The lion, as he was eating, the voice, the spirit of God came to the older prophet and told him, because you have disobeyed, you will not reach your home. And indeed, lie and devour him. Why I say this? We have men and women of God. Yes, God speak to them. But before you take a final decision, what they have told you, ask God about it. That's why you hear many a time I say, whatever I tell you, ask God, is this Ibrahim your son? Because everybody say I am son of God, but God don't know them. Then if I am God's son, he'll tell you that is my son. Praise God. So same, whatever a prophet, prophetess tell you, take it, but come to God and ask. It doesn't mean that you doubt. That is what we call independent heart. Devil hate an independent heart. I tell you as experience. I made a mistake and I never want anybody to make such a mistake. Always, I'm a kind of person, I come back to God. But somehow I changed that and I, I, it cost me. So wherever you happen, come back to God. When God tells you, he will not lie. May God bless his word.